Hello, Louis. Thank you for all that MQTT feedback. Uh, you, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> that was very helpful. You caught all my sins. <laughs> You can tell you can tell that I wrote the MQP spec and then uh, converted that to MQTT. You caught you caught me on on a few places there. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's the way to do it. <laughs> That's what I do yeah. all the time. Hey guys. Good morning. Hello. You sound very happy and cheery today. Uh, morning. Hey, Louis. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Austin. You know, one of these days I'm going to figure out <clears throat> and remember how to actually spell Huawei. I can never remember that. It's one of those words that escapes H U A W E I. Okay. H U A W E I. Thank you. All right, got it. <laughs> Jeez. So Austin, did you have a nice little vacation? Hi, Doug. Hi, Doug. Hey, everyone. Yeah, I went to Sedona in Arizona. It was, uh, it's beautiful. It's one of those cool. places that people say, oh, it's so beautiful, so beautiful. And then you get there and you're like, wow, it really is, it really is so beautiful. <laughs> uh, spend a few days hiking and just being outside and away from the screen. Cool. Uh, hey, you're on. Hi, I brought a guest with me, Iran. Hey. Hello. Am I sharing the right uh, window? All right. Thank you, Mark. I think we made this time for uh, Rob to join, so. <laughs> I forgot all about that. It'd be funny if he didn't join. Maybe I'll ping him and remind him.
All right, you want to get started, Mark? Or you want to wait? I don't think it's going to join. Sure, why don't we get started? I believe that from the last week, we were curious what uh, Austin has come up with. That was one of the key items. I think that there is a Yeah, there was an issue that you put in that we didn't get to discuss on Thursday. So, Austin, would you like to start with discussing this? Sure thing. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So, I, I kind of outlined the goals of my presentation in the beginning of this issue. Uh, you know, I want to introduce cloud events and announce the initial version that we finished. Make sure we communicate the why. Um, you know, why this is important, why it's going to be a big deal now and in the future, and communicate use cases of cloud events. I uh, want to kind of paint a picture of possibility uh, of what, what cloud events will enable in the future, and then also make it real for the audience by showing, by showing up just a, a taste of this in a, in a real demo. Um, and lastly, of course, tell our story of collaboration and celebrate the people who've been working on this. Um, so anyway, I only have, I think, 30, 35 minutes, I, I believe, in the talk. Uh, at the same time, there's a lot of people who have expressed interest in participating in this demo. Um, and there's a lot of stuff we could do. So it's a, it's a bit of a challenge here. Uh, for inspiration, I've outlined a, a handful of use cases um, for discussion topics of things that we can illustrate. And then I followed up with a comment of kind of something I think that we might be able to pull off and that may be able to accommodate all the people who want to participate. In this comment uh, is a proposal for a e-commerce, an event-driven e-commerce store. Um, and I'd simply walk through it during my presentation and I pretend to be a user and I do a couple actions in this e-commerce application. I'd register for the application, I'd view a couple products um, I'd, in, I'd encounter an error, and I'd also purchase a product. And these actions are going to be expressed as events, and these events can integrate. There are going to be cloud events, of course. I think I might just publish them directly from the client side uh, of, the, uh, of the web application. And I outlined a few events um, in this flow. There's uh, the user profile is created. That happens when the user is registered. Um, a storage object is created that happens when we fetch the user's profile image. Um, an error is received that happens when the user is, encounters an error on the client side and gets some type of 500 status code. Um, a user viewed event, which happens when the user is simply viewing a product on the website and a user purchased event, uh, which of course happens when, when I pretend to go in and purchase a, a product. The way I think this could work is if we, if we incorporate our company's project called the Event Gateway, the whole thing was designed as a event router uh, for the serverless era. And it could simply, uh, anyone could hook up their fast product to it directly. And I could basically rig up this whole demo to publish events from the client side, pass them through to the Event Gateway, through to the various companies' fast products um in in their respective platforms they could also do some cloud events handling i'm not sure how far they want to take it uh it's really up to them but this is the general story i was thinking um the question is can we can we pull it off of course because there's there's a there's a lot in here and how, do, how does everyone want to integrate and my general thoughts were you know we publish these events and you know people can pick what what they want to do with them um, so I think uh, the best is to try and show something which is a really mixed environment, like maybe events from a few cloud providers, you know, maybe more than one uh, router and then multiple functions consuming it, so try and make it uh, messy. Yes, we could do all that. It's, um, it'll be a complicated architecture and difficult to rig up. The other question is observability. You know, my goal here is to, to make it real for people. And how do we actually show them what's going on and how do we show them across all these, across all these integrations what's going on? Now, cloud that, events can solve this problem because we have consistent meta, metadata finally and we can put tracing information in there. 
um, in the long term, we're going to be we're going to be able to nail that and provide a great event driven observability story thanks to cloud events. But as for the demo, which is coming up very soon, I'm not sure how much I'm going to be able to pull off. And that's contingent on the complexity of the demo itself. Well, that's that's actually something I was trying to wrap my head around because I understand everything you said there in terms of the demo. You got a client generating events, goes to the gateway, spits out uh, uh, events as function calls to all the various platforms and each platform then receives it. And it's the next step that I'm, wrap, I'm having to wrap my head around in terms of what what, what, how did you envision presenting the output from all our various companies receiving these things in your demo environment? I mean, were you thinking something as simple as having a whole bunch of different, you know, mini windows that here's the Microsoft one, here's the IBM one, here's the VMware one. And look, they all received events. You could see that they all got it. I mean, how, how are you envisioning this playing out or being displayed to people? Great question. It depends, of course, what, what providers want to do with this. Um, you know, because we have a centralized piece of middleware, which all this stuff will be routing through, we can always put in something to add tags and use that to create some type of visualization afterward. Um, I don't know how much of that we're going to be able to rig up before the demo. Uh, so I might just have to kind of fake it for the demo. Yeah, and I have uh, another idea, you know, maybe there is like a Twitter account or, uh, you know, an object bucket where every function after it gets the event sort of generates a, a tweet or writes a file or something like that. And then, you know, you can open a Twitter feed or a object bucket, you know, and, and show all those responses. You know, That's I simple. got it from OpenWhisk, uh, you know got it, you know, everyone will sort of print, got it on a Twitter. Oh, so, so you're thinking of each, each of our company's function basically generating a tweet and then Austin can just monitor that, that treats that tweet stream on the stream on the screen. You can see which company actually receives it and tweets about it. Yes. And even maybe print something from the content to make it a little interesting. Interesting. So it can work. generate like a, uh, a message that has something like hello kubecon you know something you know kelsey style and um you know it gets routed to all the functions and every function will say you know got this Interesting. that's yeah the challenge here is to to find a, a simple story that everybody can integrate into um, and that twitter example is actually a pretty good one um i guess i also want to wanted to try and make sure that we're showing off the value of cloud events and what can we do to show off the value of, of cloud events in that Twitter example you think you're on? Well, I would wave my hand and say at least the events can be consumed by multiple sources. I think just solving the sheer problem of, uh, you know, multiple frameworks receiving the same events from different sources. You know, yeah. it's not trivial to them. De demoing TCP IP is not attractive. I realize that. Uh, <laughs> I've been doing this for the last 25 years, but um, mm. we, can do, we can do a fancy scenario and with that very effectively show, show off Austin software. Um, or we can do more, uh, less, less, less scenario, but show kind of end to end interop between all different platforms. And um, I'm, I'm more leaning towards the latter, I have to say. What do you think that looks like, Cummins? Um, well, we can, we can have, um, yeah, there's, there's function as a service, service endpoints. Um, and there are, Publishers, and I think if we can show that the functions as a service endpoints um, can receive and and dissect cloud events from all kinds of different publishers, if we can basically just show that, um, and, and that might be such that you know you send an event and then the code does nothing but just dumping the the contents of that event into a log, and it does so on OpenWhisk, and it does so on 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 our platform, does on other platforms. And then you can go and publish to that from the different providers and you basically wire them together. That's, that's already a win. And for that, we don't need to have a fancy scenario. And the fancy scenario is harder 
and more work, I guess, than just putting, having existing event publishers, um, you know, changing them to go and publish or you know, make up an event publisher that, that, that published an event, but where you can go and generically parse that thing. I, just, I, that, I think that opening, that uh, opening multiple con consoles seems a, a little uh, complex. I think that's why having something like either throwing an object in a bucket or a Twitter feed or anything that you know, can show all the messages arriving from all the different FAS platforms will, be, will make it simpler. I do agree that having more than one publisher uh, allows us to make a stronger point versus having a, a single, you know, even maybe a, a, one event from Google, one event from Azure, you know, et cetera. Yeah, and, and, and so unifying all the, all the kinds of events that we all have, like, like getting on, because what, you, what, what happens here with the events is that there are some s semantic alignments um, that, I don't think we're ready for like the storage object created thing. There is no such event that all of us publish, right? Yeah, let's let me. Which means let me now, you need, need, now you would have to normalize twice. You normalize from a um, a you know, whatever current event format exists to the shared event formats that we have agreed to, and then now you're doing a second transformation where you need to have the storage event. Um, and need to go and normalize that across platforms. And that's something that we're, that's just not a, something we've done in this forum. Right, so, right. but I don't so think what? the example is that you get a notification about an object bucket change in S3 and in Azure, and then you create a thumbnail, because that really not something that we've standardized, but just at least printing out that, you know, got an event well, from Azure or got I, an event from I, I Google. Agree. I, I agree that visualization of that you got the event that if, if you want to do this via, via Twitter or via some other platform, that's, that, that's fine. I mean, you show the, you show the mechanics, you just want to surface the fact that, that someone has gotten a call and then has, has, and you want to make that visible somewhere. Uh, that's reasonable. But I think fundamentally the, the, what I see from Austin's proposal is he's wanting to understand the real world use case and I think what you're saying is perhaps we don't need to show or we can't show real world use case and we should just show interop. Is that the distinction that I'm hearing? Uh, yes, yeah, so that's, that's my point. Showing interop is gonna be easier than um, showing a full scenario because the full scenario really m means that we have to figure out how to align the semantics. Yeah, to clarify this, this demo tries to go for interop and a real world use case. Um, so Austin, one thing I'm not really clear, Let, let's say I have a, you know, an S3 event notification that generates an HTTP that could generate directly into the function. So what will be the role of the event router in that case? Um, could you clarify that question, Yaron? You know, for example, I'm, I want to generate an S3 bucket event. Okay, mm -hmm. I go to SNS, I say, here's my HTTP endpoint, send a message to it. And the HTTP endpoint will get, you know, using an API gateway, will get to the function. So what is the uh, role of the um, event router in that scenario? Is that it, instead of registering the function, you, instead of re you register a generic location and that would route based on some policy? Or is that to uh, register things that don't have a webhook or Uh, if you wanted to to create a scenario where you're reacting to an event from AWS S3, uh, we could have that S3 event be published. It could be sent via SNS over to a Lambda function. The Lambda function could normalize it. And the Lambda function could send it anywhere, to be honest, um, or it could go through the event router. The event router, to be honest, I'm, I think the event router is a very, our event router is a very convenient way to rig up this demo. At the same time, I don't want it to be totally centered on our event router. I am trying to show off some, some other mechanism for, I mean, thanks to cloud events, you could just send these off anywhere without an event router. I think the event router can be a value. Uh, right, but if we can show something interesting about the event router, I think it's a, it's a plus. I'm just trying to see what's this interesting thing we want. Because if, if you're just forwarding an HTTP request, people say, okay, why do I need it? But if you're showing something more interesting, maybe transforming an event, or maybe monitoring, you know, something, then it sure shows value or something. But to me, the, the, I thought the point of the event router was to sort of 
um, what's the word I'm looking for, to sort of interject the interoperability in the sense that, sure, you could take an event producer, hook it up to an event consumer, and they could that could work just fine. But you also could very well have just set yourself up to be locked in to, to one or the other. But sticking the event router in the middle where all five or however many platforms are all hooked into that, the event router is allowing us to easily have a single event producer broadcast this thing out to a whole bunch of different people. And while it's not necessarily ensuring the operability, by doing the broadcasting for us, one, the consuming, the, the producing side doesn't need to know how to do the registration of all these various guys. It goes through an intermediary. And then because we have multiple consumers on the other side, all, they're all going to receive, in essence, the exact same events, but, but they are guaranteed they're, they're guaranteeing the interoperability because they're all processing it correctly. So that I look at the, the gateway as just, the, or the router as being sort of the, 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 middle, the, the middleware that's sort of helping guarantee that everybody can talk the same thing without being hard-coded to each other. Yes, absolutely. And plus there's going to be a lot of value added in the future uh, because it's the, you know, the centralized pipe. It, you can add tracing information. You can do transformations there. You can do validation. So you could do a lot there. But I just want to back up a bit it seemed like there was some consensus earlier on in this call that if we just simply publish the same event to multiple fast providers, that that would be enough to show off right now. Is that, is that, the, is that what people were communicating earlier? And is this what we think will be enough to you know, win hearts and minds of developers? It, I, I think if we, uh, not, not the same event, but so we can publish arbitrary events from arbitrary sources if they comply with our spec. Right. So I have this, I posted this earlier, the email unfortunately didn't go out. I have this generic function, which basically goes, so an Azure function now, which goes and takes any event grid event and turns it into a cloud event. So you can hook up, you know, anything that's in our platform. Um, we can now spit out as a cloud event and then send it to everybody. Nice. I, th I think what we need Austin is, is two things. One is show more than uh, one event, maybe potentially even from two separate cloud providers, just to, for the sake of showing off the interoperability, and um, yeah, and then and then we need to make it visual, like either the Twitter or any other idea where you know it's sort of uh, people can relate to that. It actually arrived. Okay, um, so I like this. First, you're on. I think the Twitter scenario. Using Twitter to make it visual is great because it has kind of virality built into it, potentially. Yep. You know, people can, can look at it, interact with it. And I think that's a, a great solution. What is the premise? What is the scenario? And how do we get, you know, how do we get more than one event from each provider and integrate Clemens, you know, functions and uh, Azure events into this as well as Google's as well as well as other people's? What is that? And also, how is that like a, can we get that close to a real world use case too at the same time? <laughs> you know, you know in, in some ways, being able to show the same function running in, on all the platforms would be the most interesting to me, mm. or something something very close to the same. Yeah, so in other words, co converging the, the interoperability and portability of functions. And that's why that's why I'm I just, I, I did this in Node.js, which is not my happiest place to be. Um, <laughs> So effectively, I have I, pay, I I I sent the link on the in the chat window for my um, yeah for that thing. Um, Actually, I I I'd, I'd like to push back a little on that only because if you run the exact same code everywhere, I don't think it tells as much of an interop story. Yeah, it, the, it our our fast platforms are incompatible enough for that not to be possible. Yeah, we'd have to write a standard <laughs> signature. Um. So, but but I think the core code can be can be um, just good enough. So, so if you, uh, since you're Sherry, if you go and take a look at the cloud event handler piece. And oh, by the way, if you write, everyone writes a, a scheme to some common thing that we defined and essentially you can have the same function uh, be um, executed from everywhere just with a tiny wrapper that maps it to the signature of each. No, no I actually, yes, I actually, I actually meant that code that you just looked at. Um, so this is, this is the, the, the you want it, you want this? Yeah, this, so, so that 
is uh, what this does is basically just prints out the cloud event as the body of a cloud event as it comes in. So we can make that function just speak to Twitter and just you know take the event or parts of the event and then just tweet that out. And then as you deploy that in your plat in your fast platform with different scaffolding around it, um, it's, it's going to go and tweet. And then the other handler. So this is the cloud events handler. That's that's being able to parse the cloud event per se. The other one, that's the event grid handler. That knows how to turn, and this is something that now that it uses now our native binding to event grid. Um, that knows how to take our event grid events and turns it into cloud events effectively, and then goes and posts them out. So I have kind of both ends of this. This is this is hooking into our platform, um, and I have a hardwired URL here. Um, so basically, you would kind of deploy your your bridge your bridge um, to go somewhere else. Here, I didn't want to make this too fancy. Um, and then on the other side, you have um, your, your, your tweeting thing. And, and if, so with this, we, so from the, so this is the Microsoft proprietary, proprietary if you will, um, bridge that translates from our stuff into generic cloud event stuff. And then on the other side, that function is able to tweet that out. If we, I think already, you know, no matter, I, I think we need to go and, and maybe need to go and build a little bit of a scenario around it. But already, if I can go and, and hook this up and I can go and push with you know, four deployments of this function to OpenWhisk and over to AWS, I don't know, and, and somewhere else, um, and I can get tweets from all of those different uh, implementations, that's already a win. I'd agree with that actually. And I think we could show the story could also be, you know, you know, here's something coming from Azure to Google. Now here's something from coming from Google to Azure. Here's something coming from AWS to Azure. Yeah. And here's something coming from AWS that is now will be reacted to by Azure, Google, you know, IBM and multiple ones. And I think there's a good story to tell. And not, and not just cloud provider, also open source is a nice thing. Yes. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, I mean, you can go and write this, this mapping function here such that the mapping function knows five URLs, um, you know, all, of all different targets, rolls the dice, and then, you know, the event goes this way or that way or that way, and then they all surface out in the Twitter feed all together. Yeah. So, so Clemens, I want to make sure I understood there. You're, telling, you're, you're saying each of us produce, or each of us become event producers, and we randomly send out an event to one of the other guys. Yeah, and then that person just tweets about it. Yeah, they, they tweet about it, and we can make it we can make it a single a single tweet stream, or we can all have our own uh, tweet accounts for that. That's that's up to how we want to do it and how we think it's it's better. We can I I think everybody having their own Twitter account for this purpose, and then having a a Twitter feed that goes and subscribes to all of those, um, maybe the fanciest one. Okay. I like it. Simple. And then we show this a tweet deck so that um, it actually streams. So, hey, Clem, <laughs> sorry, I just, I just want to clarify. So, so, so a platform publishes an event that gets transformed to a cloud event and sent out to another platform, which reacts to it and posts to Twitter. Yeah. Pretty and, simple. Yeah. And what's the mechanism by which we all find out about each other's target endpoints is it just offline we just tell each other it or yeah. there a central okay it's fine okay. yeah I, I think i think we'll just we'll just swap urls and that's it okay easy enough and then so the way the way we would and then and then it's really up to the respective platform how you trigger your events so we might go and just you know so my case might be based on blobs and my, I might just throw random Flickr pictures into my own, of course, um, into an account and then let you all know about it. Mm -hmm. I like this. So again, uh, yeah. you're saying every function will do something else. They're yeah. just good. Well, They're just going to put the, the events could be anything that happens on your respective platform. It, you know, then you emit it, and then the the subscribing function on the other platform is just going to post something to Twitter. Yeah, but I mean, I could, we'll have to I figure out what those scenarios are. So, so I will I will tell you the events I raise. So let's say I 
so let's say I'm building a, a thing that goes and uploads Flickr pictures into the storage account that then will contain links to those pictures because I'm going to make that account public. And if you understand my, my, uh, my event, which is easy for you to tell because you have a cloud, you have an event, uh, event type, then you can actually go and dig into that, into the details because you, then you know what it's all about. And then you could actually go and tweet that picture. Okay. Yep. Uh, right. Yeah, but let's write it down and then let's do it. Yeah, okay. but I assume we want a few of those things, like every function to do something else. So that's one use case. So, but then. Yeah, then, maybe we'll do something simple like sentiment analysis on a text or something. I don't know. Oh, I love that idea because IBM, I, I've, I've, <laughs> we have a IBM Watson service that does tone analyzing. So, yeah, similar type of thing. That'd be cool. Yes, the Watson thing. Yeah, bring in Watson. Let Watson rule the world. You know that. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> it already won Jeopardy. Come on, it could do this easy. Yes. It, <clears throat> also, it also can. It can cure everything. It can also put tomatoes on the blockchain. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we we got Watson on the brain over here. You know that. Come on. All right. All right. Let me let me run this. Let me run this by you guys. Um, so there's. I think we could do kind of these one-to-one -one interoperability demos, you know, rigged up via Twitter. One platform publishes an event, another platform reacts to it. And we could actually nail real world use cases with each one of those, whether it's an image was uploaded, whether it's sentiment analysis, whether it's processing clickstream data or something. Um, I think that'll be, that'll be great. And then I think it'll be even more interesting if we could show one to many connections after that. And so something, something happens and multiple, multiple functions can react, whether they're on cloud platforms and open source platform, and maybe there's a function in the edge that's also reacting to this. And I think that'll be kind of the cherry on top. Yeah. Um, so to limit complexity, are we gonna tackle a whole, so if, if we like that, that story, um, I, and I do think it's pretty compelling, um, we should nail down these use cases. For, we should nail down each example and get to work. I agree. I already wrote an example for S3, so I can sort of listen on, you can throw something on S3 and then we trigger on that and, and send the information of the text file to something else. So it's a, t it's a uh, what's, the, what's the exact use case you're on? It's a, a text file is uploaded to S3 and? Yeah, and then I'm reading it and writing uh, sort of the sentiment analysis of that file. Okay. Or maybe, you know, we'll figure out something to do with the text. Um, and, you know, we could, I have another example, which is like uh, looking for like social security numbers and credit cards and so uh, sensitive data in a file. The kind of PCI analysis. Yes. So this way I don't need to write it. I already have it working. Your Honor, if you could pick one. But I, right now I have you down for AWS to Nucleo example, um, some anal analyzing a text file. If you could just, if you could just sure. pick one thing, sure. that'd, be, that'd be great. Uh, De Clemens, what do, you, what do you think you'd like so, to do? I'll, I will do the following thing. I will write a um, periodic agent that goes and uh, fetches a random picture from my wonderful Aviation Geek photo library. Um, and then we'll go and take uh, one of the thumbnail sizes and um, throw that into an Azure storage account. And then I'm going to use that, this gateway effectively to be sitting between um, event grid and um, an arbitrary, uh, and any number of arbitrary services. And I will basically just use a random function to go and balance across them. And that image that's uploaded is going to be sent to what? What, what type of? I'm going to, so, so the, the, the image the image gets uploaded to Azure to Azure Storage, mm -hmm. and I will give all of you a cloud event that is the Microsoft Storage um, a blob created event, um, of which I will tell you the detailed data schema, and then out of the data schema you can fish the URL, and then you can go and tweet that you got a, that you got uh, a um, 
uh, that you got this event, and then you can also include the image URL, and that will actually then show in the Twitter feed. Just for the daisy chain, you know what, maybe we listen on an S3 event and we convert it to a cloud event and forward it to someone else to generate a thumbnail. So we can show the daisy since, chain. Since, since, you're, since you're gonna get an event that has a picture on it because I'm generating that already, you could do that. Actually, since, since Watson IoT, for instance, has, uh, sorry, Watson, not IoT, has um, all kinds of fancy, um, uh, image in, image classification logic in it. You could go and classify that picture and figure out what airplane it is. Yeah. By the way, we have uh, an example with uh, using uh, Azure Face Recognition API. Yeah. One 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 thing that I might say is we should be careful about having a carefully constructed chain operating, uh, because then if any one uh, site fails, then we all fail. Yeah, and this um, way I'm all for well, and, and having it, having the broadcast and having us do things randomly sounds like a better bet. Yes, because something is always going to work. <laughs> that was like keeping it flat was also one of my ideas here in terms of just making sure that it all works. Because uh, one piece, if you have a chain, then one piece fa failing means the whole thing fails, and that's not a good look. Okay. Right. We we want we want to show success uh, across the board, but uh, I. I'm also cautious on demos. Oh yeah. Um, all right. So I'm I'm still trying to like map out the story here. We've got a clear AWS to Nucleo example. Uh, we have an Azure image uploaded Azure storage event that's going to be published. Is there something we want to do specifically with that? Yeah, but the question is uh, to show cloud event. Let's assume we got a S3 event. We need to generate some cloud event to something else. Yeah, and that's your example right now, right? You're on. We could we could do something uploaded to S3 and react to it with a Nucleo function. Okay, but who's going to convert the S3 event to a cloud event? Is that going to be a separate function or maybe event router or something? Um, that's that's going to have to be a separate function. I mean, okay. one, one thing you could do there is just run that in, as a lambda. Yep, just like what Clemens did on on Azure. That yeah, that's the, exact, that's the exact code that I'm showing here is that's, that's taking our, our uh, preparatory event format and turn that into a cloud event. Oh, so and you're saying we'll do the same using a Lambda function that will convert it to a, yeah. or, um, okay, or any other function, convert it, to, you know, uh, convert it to a cloud event and then something else processes the event. So like two functions, one converting the S3 to cloud events, the second one takes the cloud events and does the text uh, processing. Yeah. yeah, and that's my question to Clemens right now. Clemens, if, if there was another platform receiving this event, do you have any ideas as to what it should do? Another function on another platform? Yeah, so I, since we had this Twitter idea, um, I think what, for, my, for my storage event, I would propose that you guys, if, if we're doing this Twitter thing, that everybody writes to a Twitter feed. And the way they write to the Twitter feed is they pick up um, some properties from the, some attributes from our cloud event and say, this is what I got. And then um, they can, in the image case, since, you, since everybody understands that, um, can then go and take the image URL and just include that in the tweet. Um, as the uh, image element, and then the image will actually show in the Twitter feed. Pointing back to our storage. Mm -hmm. Sounds like this could be a candidate for the one-to-many connection. Yeah, and that's, that's how I think about it. It's like, I would literally, everybody who writes that function in their platform, which will probably be, if we're doing this in Node, be the same code, but just with different scaffolding around it, um, will um, give me a URI and then I will go in and basically make a list of URIs in this function here in my deployment and then choose a random number for every call I get. And so I randomly spray across them. Oh, cool. Right, so that's- So, the so you can send us like a Postman example of the message that you're going to send. And yeah, then that's, we exactly, that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm, I, I will within the next, um, 
now I'm, it's going to be difficult with promises because I'm tra traveling to Hanover Messen uh, tomorrow morning. Um, I will, as soon as I can, I will say within the next two days, give you a working example of all that. Mm -hmm. With some object stored in somewhere without the password or with the password that we know? Or? Yes, 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 yes. I, I will find a way to make it all known. <laughs> All right, it, it sounds like we have, we have two pretty cool examples. We have AWS to Nucleo. Something happens on S3, Nucleo is gonna to react to it, uh, doing maybe sentiment analysis of a text file, something like that, and write it to Twitter. That's a cool example because that's you know, the major cloud platform combined with an open source platform. I think that'll be pretty compelling to use. And then we have the Azure example to many fast providers. Um, so whoever wants to integrate with that, can write some functions to do so. Clemens is going to provide that information. And the use case is doing some type of something with an image and also writing that to Twitter. Yeah. So um, Clemens, you know, we, we could certainly help out writing you know, a function to react to the image and yeah, if, doing if, something with it. If you have a, um, um, assume, if you assume that you get a URL from me, it would be good if someone could pick up the, the work and, and do the tweeting thing in Node. Mm -hmm. um, and it's basically that there must be 400 different Node.js libraries, mostly abandoned, that all know the Twitter API. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, actually, Clemens, before we, before we actually get into divvying up work, we have, we have two examples here. Yeah. Do we feel like we need a, a third one? Um, we can do more. Um, right. we have all kind of, we have so, all Austin, do you have time for a third one? Um, it depends on how compelling it is. <laughs> okay. You know, I think AWS to an open source fast platform is, is very cool. I think Azure to many fast platforms is very cool. Are we, are we missing anything? Is well, there... again, I think, I think the, the real world use case, you know, what posting to Twitter isn't necessarily real world, but in some ways I care more about interrupt right now and show real world later on. In my mind, we're not showing off in these examples. We're not showing off posting to Twitter. We're actually doing something, and then the result is posted to Twitter for a simple solution yeah. to observability and to maybe you know, help this thing get some viral traction. I like the way you think. <laughs> it's all in the marketing. You know what? Let's, let's just move forward with these two, these two examples, um, and then let's see, let's see where we get to with these. So there's the AWS Nucleo example you're on. I think that's, the ball's going to be in your court on that one. Um, it sounds like, you know, you just write a Lambda function that, that transforms yep. to a cloud event, which sends it over to your platform. Since we're already doing an image example, I think the sentiment analysis of a text file or doing, doing some other type of data processing would, would be compelling. That's my opinion, at least. And then regarding the Azure to many scenario, um, our team can certainly write one or multiple functions to react to that image uploaded event on Azure storage. Clemens, if you could just you know, share, share the code and give us an example of what that event looks like and everything. We could get started. Um, and, we'll, and we'll start all this by, let me outline all this in the GitHub issue, mm -hmm. uh, just to clarify expectations and everything. And we could you know, keep the, the conversation going in there um, and then get to work on these, two, on these two scenarios. Yeah, so you got the, um, uh, I sent email just before this meeting, which, um, which shows effectively what the, st what the structure of that event looks like. Great. So, so you I, should... So I, I apologize. I had to step away for a second. I had a phone call. But um, as I was coming back there, Austin, you made some comment about one particular platform talking to another particular platform, and you called them out by name. Is it possible for us to write this up in such a way that anybody can choose to participate on either side? Or at least yeah. on the receiving side? That's my next task. So I... <sighs> Maybe we can even do a few things, you know, if it's a text file, everyone can choose a different type of manipulation on the file. Yeah. Or something. 
Yeah, so you can, you know, one could do sentiment, the other one does, you know, PCI compliance, the third guy does, uh, I don't know, word count. <laughs> well, I, I think the key here is let's get something, you know, at least simple up and running, and then we can, then we can expand the, the use cases as we have time. Yeah, that's right. I, I think keeping it simple, especially your example, you're on just because that's how I think the story should start in the demo. It's just like, here's a one to one connection across platforms. And then the next chapter in that story is here's a one to many connection across platforms. Um, and I think that's, that's fine. Let me let me try and write this up in a GitHub issue and we'll get some feedback, uh, hopefully on on Thursday. But, um, but this is pretty good, in my opinion. Would it make sense for us to create a a uh, private Slack channel in order to share URLs and um, Probably, you know, yeah. username, passwords, etc. Can't hurt. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, we could we could probably just use the cloud events channel, right? Okay. Well, if, you, if you're okay with uh, publicizing out to the entire whoever subscribed to that. Well, actually, that raises a different. You actually said URLs. I'm not that worried about. But then you started talking about passwords and stuff. I was assuming, at least from my side, I was going to not require authentication for you guys to send me stuff. Um, do we want to talk about that? Sorry, Doug. Um, why is the why is the authorization necessary? Well, I was going to say it's not because I was I was going to oh. have a function that lets anybody post to me, and I was going to just do something with it, but. Mark had mentioned something about usernames and passwords. Are you guys assuming that your functions are going to require authentication? No, I, I, I don't think we should, we should worry about that. Okay. I, I agree too. I just want to make sure. Yeah. Works for me. Okay. Cool. Okay, Doug, I think I could write this down in a way where people can plug in. I think we should keep the first example simple, just showing that one-to-one -one example between AWS and Nucleo. The second example, Azure to many, is gonna be a good candidate for other people to, to plug in. And I'll write down some criteria as to what that should look like. People wanna integrate, and then maybe we could take it from there. Yeah, because so, I, think both, I think both of them could, in, could include you know, one to many. The first one doesn't have to be one to one. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. All so, right. So one thing that might, so one thing that might um, uh, be required for the Azure to anybody thing is that there, so we require, I'm, I'm asking my engineering team for what the whitelisting procedure, what the whitelisting procedure looks like, but we have a handshake um, that is kind of a parallel uh, function. So you don't need to show it and I can give that to you how the handshake looks, but we have kind of this anti-abuse function, which I'm trying to uh, formalize in our webhook spec, um, but that's kind of in place. So for us to be able to actually push to you, um, you uh, need to opt into our abuse mechanism. So um, I'll, I'll give you an answer on whether you need to do this or not um, for, uh, for us to be able to push to you. Clements, can you, can you just push to a single endpoint like our, our event gateway? Because we can could, we could handle the, the one-to-many connection. Well, the point is that Azure should be able to go and like an Azure thing should be able to talk to, to all of those things, right? Mm -hmm. So let me let me talk to that. Uh, let me talk to our to our guys. And in, in in doubt, we can go and talk to your gateway. Okay. All right. So we'll we'll figure we'll figure figure this out. I'm just saying this this is something that is um, um, in the picture. Mm -hmm. um, so th this this abuse mechanism that I'm writing into the HTTP hook spec is, is a real thing. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Just to clarify the this the use cases here, we have. <laughs> An image uploaded to Azure Storage, people have, can react to that, and then we have sentiment analysis of a text file. Yep. So that text file is going to be uploaded to AWS. The image will be uploaded to Azure. That's right. Okay. Action item is for me to write this up. I should get that done by the end of today. Let's just keep chatting about it. If anyone has other suggestions, just add it to this issue, and hopefully we'll be in a good place to present this on Thursday. And, and I will say that we will need to check with our friends at uh, Oracle and Google, see whether they want to participate as well. Yeah, I, I think the best way to do that is to, is to write it down in a way that's clear and it yep. gives them a clear way to integrate. Yep.
Yeah, this is really, we, we'll be an event consumer, so we'll take the event and put it to Twitter. Awesome. And I love the Twitter suggestion you're on. Nice one. Yeah, that'll be, yeah, that's, that's going to be fun. <laughs> it's good, it's oh, it's going to work. The demo guys will be with us. Yeah. Yes. yeah. The, as things go, Twitter will be down at that day. <laughs> 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 Most likely, but uh, yeah, what a great solution to to the observability story right now. So, anyway, this is cool. Maybe um, we'll prepare uh, we'll prepare a Slack uh, bot uh, in case Twitter is down. <laughs> we'll we'll figure it out. Worst case scenario, I'll just I'll record a video beforehand, so I can always fall back to that. The man has done that before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Austin's giving a keynote. Of course, Twitter will be there. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We need to tweet about it. Um, yeah. So my my I'm I'm gonna be as good as I can in terms of coding. I will be in at Hanover Messenger for the next two days, and um, I will try to squeeze it into whatever time time allows me. Um, but it might. I will do it as fast as I can. Um, you're, you're on. I got a quick question for you. In the first example, which is now AWS to many, doing some type of sentiment analysis of a text file, um, would you be okay if we rig that example up through our event gateway? We could author the Lambda function that does the transform and just run. Yeah. And let's pipe work for over <laughs> let's to you. Work. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you're you're going to essentially write the Lambda function, pass it to you, and then we, we should expect a cloud event. That's right, and we'll post it uh, via HTTP. We just need to know where to where to post it to. Sure, and can you send us um, like again a Postman example of a you know of a dummy uh, event? Absolutely. Um, cool. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. We should come up with some what that text file is. Yeah, just try is. to take the, you know, forget the SNS, just take the S3 part of the message. You know. Yeah, and we'll, we'll just put it, we're just going to put it in the request body. Um, I think this is what Clemens refers to as a structured event. Yep. That's why I'm saying, you know, the best if you send us an example, then, you know, if we have any issue or clarification, we could uh, ask it. Yeah. And so then we, <laughs> we would test it against the function and... Yeah, the, the email that the email that I sent that I sent earlier to the to the list actually co contains an example already. What I will what I still have to do is to send you an example with um, um, where the, the the URL actually the URL for that for that for the image blob actually resolves and you can get at it. Because, so for that I need to make the account public. Um, sure, but, but we also need an example based on the S3 event, which have a slightly different metadata. That that is the truth, and uh, good luck with that. Yeah, that, but that's uh, that's Austin's problem. That's the uh, fun. Exactly. The nice thing is the nice thing is the differences will now be minuscule because, and we can tell because we now have a standard. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Cool. I will write this up in an issue. I I think that's it. Unless anyone has any other further comments. Sounds like we're done here. Cool. Okay. All right. Yeah, I like this. Thanks, everyone. Thank Welcome. you. Thank you.